President Trump hammering Democrats with a stern midterm message. Come election day, Americans will remember Kavanaugh, and they will remember all sorts of other things because that was a shameful act. This will be an election of Kavanaugh, the caravan, law and order, and common sense. But the choice could not be more clear. Democrats produce mobs. Republicans produce jobs. Democrats, however, don't seem to be able to get on the same page. For example, Texas Senate hopeful Beto O'Rourke is doubling down on impeaching Trump. I would liken uh, impeachment to an indictment. There, there is enough there to proceed with a trial for a full vetting of the facts and to make the best informed decision in the interests of this country and our future. Senator Spartacus, Cory Booker, is making this bizarre claim that Canada is more American than America. Every country we are competing with is driving down the cost of college. Germany costs between zero and four percent of median income to go to college. Canada, I can't stand how they're out Americaning us in Canada. <laughs> Trudeau, give me a break. <laughs> Costs about six to seven percent of median income to go to college. What does it cost in America? Fifty-two percent of median income. And why are other nations out American than us? And then there's Nancy Pelosi explaining why she doesn't really care if socialist policies hurt Americans. I think that, that we owe the American people to be there for them, for the, for their financial security, respecting the dignity and worth of every person in our country. And if there's some um, collateral damage for some others who do not share our view, well, so be it. But it shouldn't be our original purpose. All right, Dana, uh, a smorgasbord of, uh, of Democrats, of Democrats trying to grasp at anything to uh, well, get a message before uh, the election. Two of those, uh, Cory Booker and Beto O'Rourke, are really running for 2020. Right. Nancy Pelosi is probably the most message disciplined out of all of them. And she remember, she's the one who's saying, we're not going to do impeachment. Like, everybody, like, stop that. And Beto O'Rourke is actually, he's saying that an indictment and impeachment are the same thing, which is just legally not true. And he should know that if he's running for Senate. I do think that if he ends up losing in Texas, you will see him on all of the shows for the next week where the host will beg him to run in 2020. And President Trump should want that to happen because that is not a, a strong message. Cory Booker, where is he giving that speech? He's in South Carolina. Oh. Is he in South Carolina because he's helping uh, congressional Democrats who are really wanting to, or, or challengers to Republicans because they really want to win? And these, that's not happening in South Carolina. Unlike Lindsey Graham, for example, he's going out on a 12 state tour after Kavanaugh so he can do all of those things. Um, President Trump said his closing argument is going to be Kavanaugh, the caravan, law and order, and common sense. Now, I think that saying a closing argument two and a half weeks until the election in this news cycle is a little risky mm -hmm. because by Saturday we could have a new closing argument because if you think about it, Kavanaugh was just two weeks ago. Um, but the Democrats, they're bailing out of three uh, important races today um, down in Texas 23rd. That's Will Hurd's seat. He's look, that was a district that Hillary Clinton won, but now he's pulling ahead. So the Democrats are going to take money out of that, try to put it somewhere else. That's happened also in Nebraska 2 and Minnesota 8. So places where the Democrats were thinking they could have pickups, those are now out of reach for them, possibly. Of course, it depends on turnout, but if they're not going to put money in, that shows something. The Democrats' closing message is going to be this. Health care, specifically pre-existing conditions, which we could talk about more if you wanted. And if you see their ads, they're starting to say, check on President Trump. They want to uh, vote for a check on President Trump. So if you're a challenger to a Republican who's already in Congress, the, our, the ad would say, Jesse Waters votes with President Trump 98% of the time. You don't want that, do you? And that's how they're trying to motivate the base. Republicans out there... Will just 98%, Dana? Yeah, well, you know, you, you hedge a little. You hedge a little on a couple okay. of things just to, you know, keep it interesting. I think that um, Republicans, if you see their ads, it's immigration mm -hmm. and support for President Trump. So this idea that this is not about President Trump, it's, it, it just really is. He should embrace it. He, he's basically out on the campaign trail all weekend. And I think that the Republicans, if they can keep focused, a lot of the races that Democrats thought they would be able to win 
will be out of their reach. Mm. What do you think about the midterms, Greg? Uh, I try not to think about them that much. I got other stuff going on. Because it's your a, job. I got a weekend coming up. Going to have some fun. Uh, the, the great thing about when you watch uh, the rally, you know what Trump's message is. It's really simple. Yeah. You know, it's national security, crime and borders. It's law and order. It's really hard to find out what the Democrats are for. You only know what they're against. Him. And they're also against being out of power. So that leads you into the into the arena of what Nancy Pelosi said, which was particularly loathsome, that collateral damage is acceptable. And we know this. We know that the end justifies the means by any means possible. They need their power. So you saw that with Kavanaugh, you know, his family, collateral damage. Right. Mm -hmm. If you look at uh, what's happening now with the car caravan, the collat collateral damage are those people who may suffer grave injury trying to cross a river or being sexually abused. But they n want that spectacle. Right. They want that. So that's collateral damage. They want to raise taxes and, and increase regulation that hurts businesses. Collateral damage. We go back all the way to Obamacare. Right. Collateral damage. You lost your doctor. Your rates went up. But that was collateral damage because the idea of, of government running health care was such a big idea. It didn't matter if you lost your doctor. So their message, it's not about ideas. It's not about progress. It's about power by any means necessary. And when you have that ideology, that means collateral damage is not just acceptable. It's practically the only thing you have. They're not Democrats. They're damage crats. Oh, no, wow. Juan, I'll let you respond to that. Thank you. Well, I mean, it's, it's to me, the, the shocking point is that Republicans don't have a message right now. So the, the president yesterday comes out and says the message is going to be Kavanaugh and Caravan. He could have thrown in there Kaepernick and Kanye. I mean, he could just got just gone full rapper on three Ks, four Ks. Yeah, because he's he is right now struggling with the absence of a message. And you look at the advertising that's being put on the air. Everybody thought it was going to be all about tax cuts for the Republicans. They're going to say we delivered on a tax cut for the forgotten man. What you see is that Republicans are not running commercials about tax cuts because they're not having any traction with the voters. So that means that you go back to red meat, you go back to the most kind of culture war issues you can find. And for Trump, you know, his number one hit on the road has always been immigration, build the wall, go after him. And that's what he's trying to do. So he's trying to get his base revved up for the midterms with these kind of red meat issues. But it's so far that the big absence is that Republicans don't have a strong message when they thought they were going to have a message. And I tell you, the even economy, on the immigration, you anything even on the <laughs> immigration issue at the White House, they're having big fights between John Bolton and John Kelly, the chief of staff over. Why is it, despite all that the president has done and all of his rhetoric, We've seen a spike in terms of people coming and crossing. Because and so they can't figure out what the right policy would be at the White House. But they want to say it's the Democrats. This is the most incredible thing. Trump says it's the Democrats who are paying to have the caravan come, Jesse. This is ridiculous, absurd. But I guess some people might be suckers out there and buy that kind of foolishness. Well, I mean, people are going down there from America oh, to help this gosh. caravan come north. That's a fact. It's been reported uh, in an article, which yeah. I'll Democrats raise to you the in the caravan. next yeah, segment. Yeah. Um, you, and also, just one, before we get to Kennedy, just I want to address you say about the tax cuts. Greg brought it up. You don't have to say tax cuts. When he says jobs, when he says the economy, yeah. when he says GDP, that's under the umbrella of everything he's done economically. Yes, and like, that's the message that include, that's getting does, across. Does that include drive up the deficit 17% in one year? No, we're not running oh, on the deficit. Oh, a Democrat yeah, talking about that. deficit No, what's spending. laughable is a Republican that saying, is oh, deficits don't matter because it's not a Democrat in the, in the White House. Oh, what hypocrisy. I think the only yeah. deficit is the ideas coming from the left. Go ahead. Oh. Uh, no, but Juan brings up a really good point, and, and the problem is, as an independent voter and a woman who doesn't fit neatly into any category or box, I look at freedom-killing deficit spending, and it is atrocious from both parties. And they are so similar in that regard because it, it really is, this is the thing that is going to hamstring generations and really curtail economic mobility, which is critical yeah. for things like hiring new employees and going out and spending money. And when you talk about uh, consumer optimism, which has been one of the big drivers for the economy and for the stock market, that is completely stifled when we finally get the bill for for this outrageous money that we're spending on everything. And no one, Paul Ryan came into power as this wonky spending, you know, he, he was a person who neutralized spending and, and talked about cutting costs. 
and the the debt is now 21 trillion dollars uh when nancy pelosi goes out and, and when she is the mouthpiece for this party and when she talks about the house is going to once again rest in democrat hands that riles up Republicans more than anything and independents because she's not a likable person. She's not only unlikable, she's a person who doesn't have a message. And, and you can joke that Republicans don't have a message and you may not agree with it, but something as simple as jobs, not mobs, that resonates with people because they would much rather have jobs and money for their kids than run up against a, a wall of protesters who are going to call them names and spit on them and stop their car and vandalize nice cities. If this was, if this was something was, about Cory Booker, because uh, we, we kind of skipped over it. He said that Canada is more American. He, is he aware that they don't have a First Amendment? Is that, I think he should go back and look it up because their freedom of speech in Canada is not absolute. Their government can pass laws that they feel are reasonable to limit your speech. So he should probably take that. So no true dat. Uh, dat. <laughs> Very Spart good. If Spartacus wants to run on Canada first, let him. <laughs> so, you know, Can't I, one, we got to go to commercial. I just wanted to say, okay. you know, I agree with you. Pelosi is not popular, especially with Republicans. They can use her in the ads. But what about Mitch McConnell saying, oh, yeah, if, if the Republicans get retain control, we're going to go after Social Security. You think that's a helpful message for Republicans? Yes. Never speak ill of cocaine, Mitch. We love it. I thank you. God bless you, and may he continue to bless the nation that has showered this land with love for more than two centuries. Thank you all. God bless you all.